Okay, so here we are at the uh, parent information night of, for students who are going into grade 10, 11, and 12. So it's grad class of 22, 23, and 24. And who are you? And I, <laughs> I am Miss Hancock. I'm one of the counselors here at GW Graham. Who are you? I'm Thomas Price, Mr. Price, and I'm also one of the counselors here. Okay, and we have a third counselor, Ms. Uh, Clark. She'll be joining us shortly, but she couldn't be here for tonight. So what we are doing is planning for graduation and beyond. Okay, so we have a course planning. It goes on, takes quite a while. It's a big event. Um, in the non-COVID world, we would be having parent information sessions, we have uh, elective fairs, all sorts of exciting and dynamic things to make sure that students are getting all the information they need to make wise choices uh, for their course planning. In the COVID world, we are relying heavily on technology and students um, making sure that they're getting the information they need uh, from their counselors, from their teachers, from their parents, from Blueprint, from their career advisor, from our lovely course catalog and planning booklet. Okay, uh, and we're hoping to have all this done prior to spring break, including having your course selections entered into your MyEd so that you can take a peek. That is our very um, sort of ambitious timeline. Ambitious. We can do it. We can do it. It's okay. possible. So it is never too late to start planning. Um, just a little reminder. So these are the grad requirements that all of our students um, are working towards. Now those students going into grade 10, uh, this is all new to you, those students going into grade 11 and 12, part of these things you've already looked after, but we want to make sure everybody knows the big picture. Everybody needs to have an English, 10, 11, and 12, that's what we call language arts. Everybody needs to have a social studies, 10 and 11, or 12. Everybody needs to have science, 10 and 11, and you'll notice those red credits they add up, that becomes a big thing. We'll talk about that in a bit later. Everybody needs a math 11 and 10. Everybody needs to have a PE 10. And by have a course, you need to actually pass the course, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Just yes. showing up doesn't count, you actually have to pass. Career Life Education 10 is worth four credits. Career Life Connections 12A is worth two credits. Career Life Connection 12B and the capstone is worth another two credits. That is eight credits in total for career. That is 10% of your grad requirements for career ed. This is important stuff, ladies and gentlemen. You need to have a fine arts or applied skill at the grade 10, 11, or 12 level. You need to have another 28 credits. Now that works out to seven courses, uh, 12 of those credits, which is three courses, must be at the grade 12 level, in addition to your English 12. You also have to do a numeracy assessment. Uh, you'll have to do a literacy assessment, and you'll have to do another literacy assessment. Those students going into grade 10 will have to complete all those. Those in grade 11 and 12, going into 11 and 12, will have already completed some of those. Okay, that's the exact same thing for the visual learners among us. A little pretty that is um, available all over the place. It's also on the back of the grade 12 course planning form. Except it's sideways, tip it sideways. It's sideways. You need to go like that. Oh, okay. No, sorry, like that. Okay, there you go. Those were our grade 12s. Just to make sure they know what they're going on. Okay, so what we're doing with the grade 10s, 11s, and 12s, we're going through all three. Um, we're going quickly to make sure everybody gets the big picture. Um, Mr. Price and I will be going to the individual classes. So students who are currently in grade 9, 10, 11. Mr. Price and I will be going to individual classes and doing a little bit more of a tailored to that grade presentation. But right now we're going for the overview to make sure everybody's got the general idea. I'm well aware that I'm talking very quickly. Apparently I'm not that entertaining and I'm not allowed to talk for very long. So this is about as loud that they let me talk for. Okay, so grade 10s. Great. Can you hold up the grade 10? Oh, that's the grade 9 one. Everything is color-coded. So the grade 10. Hold on, I got it. It's coming. Okay. Grade 10, 10 blue. is the blue course selection form. Okay, your child will be bringing home a course selection form. If they're coming into grade 10, it should be blue. And it should have grade 10. 
they are required to make to pick five required courses and that is right on the course selection form it says required courses they would need to have three elective courses three alternate second choices and those are the courses that the students want to have themselves these are the, the electives and the alternates are the fun ones that kids want to do. That's where you're going to have those electives, the metalwork, the band, the second language, all sorts of exciting things and those are the choices. Um, they'll also need to pick a PE, one of the PEs and there's lots available there. And they'll also need to pick their maps and I'm going to go through those a little bit more in depth. Okay, career prep program. If your child is thinking that might be thinking of going into the trades, Please let us know so we can start planning accordingly. The child will take the blue course selection form home and the parents will sign it. That will tell us that you're okay with the selections that your child has created. Okay, and this will be due February 16th to the 18th to the teacher. Please do not just wander through the school, actually hand it directly to the teacher so we can track who has handed in their form. Okay, so what that's what the form looks like in depth again blue form blue form sorry for some reason it wouldn't photocopy is blue on this presentation so it's just white with a little blue dot on it okay and again the, the um they're broken down into the courses that students have to take and and that does need to be signed so all students are required to take an english um at the grade 10 level, there's several different options available to you. They're all listed in the course booklet, okay? Uh, there's the Gram X version, and that's talked about in the um, virtual fair video thing that was that's also available. Uh, or in the online. course booklet. Or in the course booklet. And the, you, you will be wanting to find this online on the website. Yeah, um, there's the humanities fine arts version. Uh, humanities fine arts is for uh, it's English and social studies with a little more of a uh, fine arts focus uh, performing arts visual arts that kind of thing we also have three options for English focused literary studies new media and creative writing they will all give you credit for English uh, 10 and then of course the Graham X which is a cross-curricular program which your students will need to find out more information about that through that video through the booklet or through their teachers uh, students also must take one social studies option. Again, they're listed there. Uh, not quite as many options as English, but they all meet the grad requirements for their for their social studies ten. Math, math is a biggie. Okay, all students must complete math ten. This is where you're going to be making some long-term decisions. Have a really good conversation with your parents, with your um, kind of make some decisions about moving forward. Um, and the different streams, we'll follow this up as well later on for the grade 11s and 12s. You'll see that the, the math you take will help influence your um, post-secondary choices or your work choices going through. Okay, so workplace math will get you to graduate. Foundations of math and pre-calc will get you into university. Or, and it will get you into either stream of university, meaning humanities focused, arts focused, or um, science focused. So big decisions to make on that one. Please make wise decisions. Okay, electives. So these are where you wanna keep your doors open, your second language. Some universities require you to have a second language. Some don't, keep that in mind. Band will drive some timetable decisions. If you're in band, please consider, um, please consider that and consider how valuable it is to you as a learner and as a human, getting all those uh, creative juices flowing. Totally, very beneficial. Yep, some courses are out of timetable. That's a course that you would take in addition to an in timetable course. An example of that would be yearbook or strength and conditioning out of timetable. Some of the band classes are out of timetable. Be aware of that. Uh, it'll say OT in the course selections if it's an out of timetable class. The electives are about you and your passions and electives are never guaranteed. I'm really sorry, as much as we'd like to guarantee everybody will get exactly what they want. The only thing that I'm willing to guarantee is that you will get what you need to graduate. Does that sound reasonable? Sounds pretty reasonable to me. We try really hard, ladies and gentlemen, but again, it would be a lie to say that we would guarantee that. 
Okay, I'm going into grade 11. So we were just talked about the grade 10s. We're going into grade 11. Start thinking about volunteering, all the different curricular activities. Post, start exploring your post-secondaries. Remember that slide, it's never too late to start planning. This is exactly what we need. Okay, so start working on whatever you think you need to be doing going for it. And the biggest piece is reaching out and connecting with the career advisor, your counselor, your teachers. Um, you have a question, reach out and ask. So again, we're going through the grade 11. So that would be the yellow course selection form. Options are slightly different, a little bit more freedom as you get up uh, in the grades. You get four required courses, not five. Your four elective courses. You have your alternate courses. Again, check your career ed programs. If you're interested in trades, let us know. We need to plan accordingly. Check work experience. If you're in grade 10 and you have a job right now, you can get work experience credits for the summer, for your summer hours. But you have to sign up before June of this year. Be prepared for that. Um, again, you're going to take that yellow form home and your parents are going to sign it. Okay, and it's due back to your teacher. That's what the form looks like. It's similar to the grade 10, but you'll notice there's fewer required courses, a little bit more electives and places that need to be completed. Please make sure you're providing us with your most up-to-date contact information so that we can contact you if we need, if we have any questions. Uh, there we go. Okay, the English 11 options, creative, creative writing, focus lit studies, focus lit studies with elaborations, which is a prep if you're going into AP, advanced placement, and new media. All of these will get you the grade 11 English electives requirement, pardon me, grade 11 English requirement, and all of these will prepare you for English 12. And they all, any of them, um, they have to be passed. Okay. There's lots of different social studies options, lots and lots. We have an amazingly dynamic social studies uh, department and they have offered this many social studies courses. So one of those has to be completed to graduate. You'll notice there's only one at the grade 11 level. Everything else is at grade 12. As long as you pass social studies 10, you can take those at the grade 11 level when you're in grade 11. So you can take as many as these as you want, but you have to take at least yeah. one. Yeah, and we're, those are, are what's offered, those grade 12 level ones, because that's what university's looking for. Yeah, they'll, they'll accept those as... Yeah. Okay. Sciences. So uh, grade 10s need to take grade 10 sciences. From That's the last time you take a general science. After that, it goes into, it breaks down into chemistry, physics, life sciences, earth science, and science for citizens. Everything but science for citizens will go on to a grade uh, 12 level, and some of them are offered at the AP level, advanced placement level. If you're interested in sciences, you're pursuing this, plan accordingly. If you're interested in taking AP and you're going into grade 10, you can start taking grade 11 courses in your grade 10 year, just like you can start taking grade 12 courses in your grade 11 year. We're giving you this information now so that you can plan ahead. Mm -hmm. And just to reiterate, you only, to graduate, you only need a grade 11 science. You do not need to, if you take Earth Science 11, for example, you don't have to take Geology 12. Right. You, can, you can leave it with Earth, at Earth Science. Excellent. Thank you. Okay, advanced placement. For those who are interested, advanced placement, these are courses sponsored uh, by College Board from the States. You may get credit for university credits. You may not, you may, it kind of depends. There's a big test. The focus is on academic rigor, advanced lab techniques, post-secondary preparation. Oops, went too fast. How can I prepare, but that's okay, because you need to have your regular science nine and 10. Your senior science, so honors courses are highly recommended if you're going through the AP route. Not required, but certainly recommended. AP chemistry honors are not required, but it's suggested there's a lot of reading and you need to be make sure that you are prepared. Okay, same with the uh, bio. Please read the descriptions in the course selection book. Online, talk to your science teacher, talk to your counselor, okay? These do help prepare you for university, absolutely. 
Okay, math, again, we, that's a big thing, making sure you're planning. If you're looking to just graduate and go straight into the workforce, workplace math will get you there. If you're looking to plan beyond that, then you want to go into the foundations of math and pre-calc, followed by foundations or pre-calc. There are options for AP, planning in advance. I seem to be using the word planning a lot. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. it's a good point. Sure and theme? this is an important one. If you're thinking of sort of science, uh, and engineering, then the pre-calculus route is what's going to be important to think about. And then business, you want at least the foundations level. And, uh, and then for arts programs as well, some of them will need a foundations 11 at a minimum. So, um, so workplace is great. It gets you a lot. But if you're thinking of post-secondaries, definitely double check what you need there. Okay. Excellent. Thank you. And again, so we've gone through these. These are our paths. Oh, where's that slide? There we go. There you go. Should I, I, get, I should have talked about that for that slide. But okay. that's okay because what we want to make sure is people are aware of what the options are. Um, and if you go into workplace math, that's fine. Um, and you decide after you finish workplace math 11 that you've decided you've changed your mind and you want to go back, you have the option to go back and do some upgrading while still in high school. Um, as long as you are can fit that into your schedule. So we have lots of room moving forward, but again, there's that word again, that planning piece that we need to be prepared for. Okay, I'm going into grade 12. Grads of 222, 2022. That's a mouthful. You a lot gotta, of twos. You gotta come up with a catchy phrase or something for that. Okay, we wanna start planning. Once, once grade 12 starts, you kind of hit the ground running with lots of different information coming your way. A really great idea to start thinking about volunteering, your extracurricular activities, researching, going on tours, just checking out what's available, um, and start thinking about uh, planning, planning a little bit. There I go again. i got to think of a different word for planning. Preparing um, for a really busy year. Okay, so here's your course selection form. It is a lovely purple color. Purple. purple. Ooh. You have one required course, ladies and gentlemen, and that is English. Now, there is another required course, which is career education, but that is automatically built into your schedule. We'll save you the onerous task of checking off um, career education by putting it in for you. Uh, every other course beyond that ours is an elective course. Please make sure you're planning those elective courses around your career goals. Uh, three alternate course choices, making sure that you're giving us some information to work with. If you're interested in work experience, fabulous, let us know. You can get uh, credits for a summer job. If you have a summer job and you let us know in advance, you can get credits for that summer job. Uh, check the career prep program. You're interested in maybe going into one of the trades, let us know. We can uh, help you in that, uh, go down that path. Take the purple signet pitch form home. Get your parents to sign it so they know what your plans are. You've had those discussions. And it is due February 16th to 18th to your teacher, please. Okay, this is again what it looks like. You'll notice that there are, as we said, one choice, and that is your English. Or probably required, that's not a choice. You get to choose which English you take, but other than that, it's non negotiable. Okay, you will, if you're signing up for AP courses, please understand that you're signing up for two courses um, for AP. So that's a little bit complicated. So if you have any questions about that, you can ask your teacher, you can ask your counselor, or you can read the instructions on your course selection form. Um, pick your electives. Those will um, sort of focus on what your career goals are. If you're not 100% sure, keep your options open. Uh, if you've got a huge path and you've already done your investigation for what you need, excellent, good job. Make sure you're putting those down and giving us those elective courses. And if you're interested in having any courses outside the timetable, remember those are in addition to your other courses, not instead of. Uh, there's a checkbox for the work experience and there's those parent signatures and student signature spots down there. Yeah, there's the arrow. See? Oh, I'm proud of that arrow. Love the arrow. There we go. Okay, so electives, keeping in mind, keeping your doors open, remembering the band, we'll make some choices around the timetable. Those out of timetable courses, electives are about your passion. 
Electives are never guaranteed in grade 12. We do tend to prioritize that a bit because we've only got you for one more year. We want to make sure you get what you get. Um, Second language, just keep an eye out on that one. Uh, UBC and SFU both kind of put an emphasis on that. So if you're considering those uh, those schools, then that, then definitely make sure to keep that on your schedule. Okay. What do I need before, before I go into grade 10, before I go into grade 11, before I go into grade 12, before I graduate, before I, okay, talk to your teachers. And you'll notice I have air quotes around talk. Um, it is COVID. You can't just wander in. Uh, so connect, email, Teams message, connect, communicate, okay? Check your um, entrance requirements. You can do that through my, my blueprint. You can do that through our career advisor. You can do that through the good old Google. Go to the Google and say, how, what are the entrance requirements for SFU, UBC, University of Toronto? They're out there. The technology is a wonderful thing. Ms. Willock is our career advisor. She's an amazing source for information. Our core selection book is another amazing source of information. GW Graham website, go have a look. And we'll also tell you if you, for instance, you need to have certain uh, prerequisites to get into BY 12, you can't just slide into BY 12, you have to make sure you have your BY 11 and your Science 10 prior. Okay, talk to your parents and guardians, make sure they know what your path is and they are helping you make those good decisions moving forward. There we go. Yeah, it's like I planned on saying that. Yeah, with Everything. good information, you can make good informed decisions. Yeah. Don't be shy. Reach out. Okay. So the plus part of the plan is the blueprint. That's our. That's how we deliver our career ed, which, as I just said, was talking about eight credits of your 80 required. So 10% comes from our career ed, which we use my blueprint as a platform to for students to show their learning. There's so much information and this is geared to individual students. You'll get all sorts of things. Okay, that's, you can look at the high school plan. I'm just gonna briefly through this as a way that students can see what their path is and what courses that they're going towards. It'll also tell you how far along your grad path you are. If you're, in, if you're a little bit nervous, you can check that out and this takes all your information and compiles it in one spot. We also have work experience. This is a way to get four more credits. Um, you got a summer job, let Ms. McConnell know, let Ms. Wiseman know, we'll get you signed up. You're looking for a job, let Ms. Wiseman know, she'll help you find out how to get that. You're looking for volunteer hours, you talk to Mrs. Wiseman about that. All of that stuff is available here at the school and uh, you need to have some work experience as a graduation requirement. So we can help you with that. Okay, and of course we have the questions. Um, this is a lot of information. Mr. Uh, Mr. Price and I will be going to all the classes um, over the next couple weeks and doing the slower presentations, more tailored to the individual grades. Um, and of course, all of this information will be available on the website. The PowerPoint's gonna stay up. Uh, but that's our contact information. Our career advisor is Ms. Willock. That's her contact information. All of this can be accessed through the website. Uh, contact the school, uh, ask your child to reach out. Um, I think... It's kind of all, folks. Uh, we, we really want to, ideally, we'd, we'd be in a, a room and be able to talk and answer questions uh, in person, but uh, we're not able to do that this year, so uh, get in touch and maybe wait till our first presentation to individual classes and then uh, and then and then let us know if you have any questions after that okay am i right on that kim yep pretty yeah. much yep and um, we are in in a non-covid world we will be doing this presentation face to face with the lovely overheated theater uh with <laughs> 200 uh interesting parents and 200 interested parents and 400 desperately petrified students um, but this is the best we can do in these COVID situations. So thank you very much for your time, ladies and gentlemen, and we look forward to connecting with you in some way, shape, or form. Um, Bye.